Hey everyone and welcome to my uh, rep rep build log here. I'm going to do something a little bit different today in which uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to convert an image into an STL so you can use it on your uh, 3D printer or any kind of uh, uh, printing projects. Um, what I've got here is a logo from a local brewery that I'm going to use to create a uh, can coaster. Um, uh, first things first though is I yes I did get permission from the brewery to be able to use their logo for this tutorial so uh, thank you very much Mankato Brewery for uh, allowing me to do that so you can see here we've got a just a a logo from from their website this is actually used for their um, uh, wallpaper I've gone ahead right clicked save the image onto my computer and uh, I'm going to go ahead and move into the next piece of program here. Uh, there's going to be two pieces of program or two programs you need to have in order to follow along. The first one is Inkscape, and uh, Inkscape is a open source and free uh, vector editing and creation uh, software. It's really nice. I use it for whenever I want to create any kind of vector art. The next piece of software you want to use is Blender, and Blender is also a open source and free uh, modeling, 3D modeling software. Um, it's used mostly for animation based off of uh, meshes and creating of um, polygons. Uh, it's really nice, really powerful, and I use it a lot when I want to modify STLs or fix meshes. Um, both of these are great tools, and I suggest that you uh, download them. So we've got the file, we've downloaded it. So first things for first, let's go into Inkscape. So uh, I've already gone in and and opened up the file, but I mean simply just to go through it, go file, open, and go to wherever you've downloaded the file. Um, it will pop up and ask you if you want to embed it or link it. I embed the file into your your project here. So once you've got the picture open. Go ahead and make sure that you've got the arrow selected. Uh, highlight the picture that you're going to be modifying or uh, creating the vector art from. Go to the top and click the path and go down to trace bitmap, which is also shortcut as shift, shift alt B. Now here you'll have a uh, new screen that comes up and this is actually the uh, different kinds of settings or way we're going to cut up the image. As you can see there's a couple different settings we have here on how to determine how we're going to break up the image. Um, for myself I like to use color. And uh, over here you can see we've got scans and scans basically says what, uh, how many colors are we going to be breaking this up into. Um, now you certainly can add more, have as many colors as you want, and um, the more colors, the more detail, but it also result in a much larger file size. For this one, uh, I'm only going to use three. Um, you can always hit update just to see how it looks, and you can see here we've got three basic colors, white, black, and red. So go ahead and click OK get this out of the way and you can see here it looks like it you know we've created some vector art uh, the big thing is it don't worry it's it's it hasn't modified your original file it's still behind here it's just actually created a new file and or a new vector and place it over the top of it so that's it for in Inkscape really all we have to do here is go ahead into file save as and make sure to save it as a dot SVG or a scalable vector graphic now we move into Blender, and we'll delete that. And once we're in Blender, just going to go up into File, Import, and see right there we've got .svg. So we go to the desktop here, where we've got our SVG, import it, and you can see there is our logo that we talked ahead before. Except it's all flat and it's kind of seems to be all on one surface. Um, so let's remove the things that we don't need. Uh, first things first is the uh, is that white background here. So just right click off uh, once off to the side here, which will select the uh, white, and just hit delete on your keyboard. Left click to delete. Now we're kind of getting down to business here. You can see, we can see the logo, but still we've got two more scans that are stuck in there. So right click again to select. Move over to the cursor and uh, left click the the blue arrow here and just move up and see you can see here that this is what I was talking about different scans um, you can do a lot of fun things here now because you've got two different scans um, 
if you wanted to, you, we could uh, we could create two different uh, two different layer heights, uh, two different thicknesses. We could then uh, you know print in two different colors or just have uh, you know an offsetting effect. Um, you can do a lot, um, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be dealing with one layer. So um, this uh, gray one can go. So I'll go ahead and delete this, and I'm left with just the main logo right here and what I really want to uh, use. So gone ahead and selected it by right clicking once and uh, first things first is we need to turn this into a mesh so when it's selected we go ahead into object in the lower left hand corner here scroll all the way up to convert to and mesh now nothing seems to have happened but don't worry we've converted this into a mesh you can go back and find out by going down into the object mode box here opening up and you can see we've got edit mode now. Now, yep, you can see we've converted this into a bunch of little triangles or turned it into a mesh. And with this, we can now take this and create a thickness to this. So we want to select the whole object. And a simple way to do that is just press A on your keyboard, and that will select all. We want to extrude it, so we'll hit E on our keyboard. and there you go. Now we're going to be extruding it up in the Z axis. Um, now you can see I'm only able to extrude up in the Z axis is with that line. Um, you can certainly go in different angles if you click Z on your keyboard. It'll allow me to move wherever I want to. But if I hit Z again, it will snap just to the Z. Um, so do whatever you'd like to. Uh, uh, for myself, I'm just going to you know just go up just a little bit left click once and you can see I have now uh, given some thickness to this 2D picture. Go down to edit mode and go back to object mode and then we can simply go into file export STL and now you have an STL that you can go ahead and throw through your favorite slicer. Um, I would suggest taking this and throwing it through say NetFab or something um, or uh, the internet fab, fab cloud, anything to uh, to go ahead and maybe um, reduce the number of vertices as well as um, fix any holes that are inside the mesh. Uh, it's going to help with a lot of headaches later. So, but uh, that's it. Um, that's how you uh, can uh, take that image and put it into a uh, uh, turn into 3D. And and just to show you a bit here, I'll uh, delete this out of the way and see if I can't open up a. There we go. Well, I have actually kind of a finished product here. And as you can see, uh, I've gone and I, I removed the uh, hops leaves around here, removed the uh, 2010, and um, just to allow, give myself more real estate inside this uh, this coaster here. So um, this is the completed STL. I've joined the two things together, the coaster and the logo. Uh, I'm not going to go into any detail with that. There's a much, there's a, there's, there's better tutorials out there on how to use Blender and how to join and edit meshes, and it, there are much better ones out there. So if you, if you want to get more involved with Blender, go ahead, look those tutorials up, and, um, and watch those. So, um, but yeah, this is the uh, STL. I'm going to go ahead and print, and uh, I hope to uh, throw up a video of, of what it looks like. Uh, just in a little bit here. So as always, thanks again for the comments and uh, have a good one.